put the axials in the and the um, satchel. Okay. Oh, so this patient um, apparently just had several weeks actually of general malaise and little weight loss, apparently a little bit of fever, went into her primary doc and he got a CAT scan. And so just did a quick scroll through here and then we'll go back. So obviously she's got a lot going on. Um, we see in the liver, I mean, first of all, here's her portal vein completely thrombosed. And then as we go through the liver, you can see that literally every single branch of her portal venous system, all the way from the hilum all the way out to the edge of the liver is completely thrombosed. And then we see all these tiny little hypodense lesions that are clustered around the uh, portal system. And then um, we look again at the portal vein and notice how the, uh, the walls are enhancing. You, should, you, know, you normally don't see the walls like that. And so we've got diffuse enhanced, a little bit of stranding around it. And then we keep on coming down. We look at this um, superior mesenteric vein and see this thrombus with surrounding enhancement of the venous walls coming all the way down the SMV. Um, so basically from this, we can tell, obviously she's got massive polyvenous thrombosis. <laughs> all the, these tiny little um, fluid collections throughout the liver are tons of microabscesses. <clears throat> and then um, she's got infection, you know, it's infected. We can tell it's infected and the, the vein is infected. So it's a highly phlebitis um, of the portal venous system and the superior mesenteric vein. And so, you know, just kind of looking on down at everything else, we come on down and I've scrolled right through this a couple of times and thought, oh, this is a funny little artifact. Oh. But then we come back and look at it a little more closely and realize that this is actually a little linear structure. Um, and then, let's see, can we go to the sagittal? Yeah. I heard all of those findings looked alike. What's that? That little linear structure. They all look the same once you recognize it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, here it is. This little linear thing, it's not an artifact, it's coming out of the third portion of the duodenum. It runs anteriorly, goes right through uh, the superior mesenteric vein, venous branch here, and into this little collection of fluid or thrombus or something. So basically putting this all together, I said, oh my gosh, this is a what I think is a fish bone that has eroded through her duodenum, penetrated the mesenteric vessels, thrombosed and, and formed infection that's traveled up her superior mesenteric vein into the portal venous system, clotted off her entire portal venous system and filled the liver with microabscesses. That's incredible. So um, <laughs> that she, um, you know, of course admitted and, and went to surgery a few days later after being on IV antibiotics. Um, and they did indeed fish out a quote foreign body that looked like a fish bone. And this is actually the path um, specimen here. Wow. So it was almost three centimeters long. They refused to commit to the speciation, but they said it was a cylindrical foreign object. Right. They wouldn't even call it a fishbone. I know. We were so <laughs> good about whether it was like a fishbone or one of the tiny ones on a chicken wing. So anyway, this is what it, yeah. Yeah, was so yeah, was and the patient had had a gastric bypass so we don't know why if it was always in the duodenum and finally worked its way out or if it had gone all the way back up like the limb so right, we, we're right. not sure about that yeah. but in order to get it out they actually had to put a scope into the um the duodenal limb and, and scoop it out um and i i looked up a couple of things about it so these fish bones of all the bones that we ingest fish bones are the most likely to perforate Hmm. Or, and penetrate through. Um, you don't get free air because they basically slowly erode through the bowel over time. And um, uh, most of them, though, pass. So we have a couple of companion cases. Um, so, Nellie, this should be part of the same thing. Yep. But um, just very, very quickly. Um, and I find the coronal to be helpful because, for example, this one here is another extruded fish bone with um, some inflammation around it. And it was completely not even next to the bowel, no, no free air. But um, on the axial, it just looked like some smudgy stuff. But on the sometimes the other um, views, you can see it. This one, they've decided to leave it there. So she has some follow-up CTs, and it's still there. Um, here is another companion. Arthur, can you maximize your window? Yes. Oops. Uh, is that better? Perfect. 
Um, here was another one that actually in the axial, you couldn't see it. And um, Amir picked this up, I think. Um, and it was a fish bone just sitting in the mesentery with a little bit of stranding around it and maybe poking out of that little, little um, small bowel. And then here is another one. Apparently in Atlanta, people are just gobbling up fish bones. Um, this one, the patient had diverticulitis, and this is a huge bone here. And it's actually going into two different diverticula. So it's like wedged two diverticula of the sigmoid colon. <laughs> that might be a chicken. And then the final companion is this one where um, this is very hard to see, but I don't know if you guys can see this, but there is a linear structure right here. This is not a fish bone. This was actually a toothpick. Oh my gosh. So, yeah, it's a skewer. Oh. It's not a toothpick anymore. It's a skewer. See this, really see this line here? Oh. Yeah. So oh, it's so a wooden I skewer that went through the. the yeah, I, think I have a picture. <laughs> um, and I'll just show you in the. See. So the wooden ones, like um, chopstick or skewer, are even. So here you can see that it's this linear thing, oh, wow. but they're really not radio opaque. And um, so just as a further companion, this was a New York Times article from recently about somebody swallowing a toothpick. It was an 18-year-old kid who was an athlete, and he swallowed the toothpick, and it went all the way to, into his right lower quadrant, perforated out of the bowel. He went to multiple hospitals. He actually ended up, and it wrote it into a, a vessel, and he got back to Remick, was super sick, had a fever of 105, and then even got scanned to MGH, and they still couldn't see the toothpick. Eventually went to the OR, and they took it out. And um, they had no idea until they went to the OR, even though they had multiple scans, and this was the toothpick. No, and then they, then they asked him, like, oh, do you remember? And he said, oh, yeah, the last thing before the first time I got sick, it had been going on for, like, a week or two, was, like, a tiny sandwich with a toothpick in it. So basically, they were in this New York Times article. They're advocating to like not put any more toothpicks in food. Yeah, or make it, it was opaque if they do. Yeah, and it was yeah written up in the near, um, Mass Journal thing. So, um, so that's it for that case and its companions. So.